know what, it's a sad, sad time right now. It's really, really depressing that there's a guy who thinks that he's bigger than the rest. What's currently going on reminds me a lot of school, where you have like the schoolyard bully who thinks that he can push his weight around and take what he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants, and that it's going to be perfectly okay. And whenever people start to push back, he then escalates his, his tactics to try and bully people over. Acts like he doesn't care, but doesn't see that deep down inside what's happening in his own backyard is that <laughs> all his friends are starting to get shaken. All his resources are starting to be taken away from him. And eventually it's going to lead with him getting absolutely just whitewashed. I'm talking about the Ukraine conflict, what President Putin is doing right. It's absolutely absurd that someone who thinks that they can bring back an old archaic time of uh, sort of like globulizing a, a whole like a whole region <laughs> taking back and creating the USSR i mean really imagine if the uk decided to launch another empire you know it's it's literally like something out of star wars where the bad guys will rise up and try and create another empire and they get absolutely shit stomped no matter what they do because if there's one thing that people hate the most it's a bully that's exactly what Vladimir Putin is right now. He's trying to bully Ukraine. He's trying to bully all the Balkan states surrounding him that if they don't join the USSR, if they don't join his gang, they're basically going to get flattened. And honestly, the amount of arrogance and entitlement in this guy is ridiculous. It's showing a hell of a lot now, especially with the statistics that you know, the facts are out there. The facts are in the media, guys. The facts are in the media, guys. Just have a look. You know, this guy's been telling his troops that they're going on a peacekeeping exercise to go and hunt down neo-Nazis. Oh, really? Neo-Nazis in <laughs> Ukraine, yeah? All right, man. I mean, even if there were, it's not something that the Russians have to deal with. That's something that the Ukrainian government can deal with. And after seeing the fucking balls on President Zelensky, pretty sure that he can handle that shit on his own and these troops these russian troops are going in you know they're entering ukrainian uh, ground and going to basically occupying their territory because they're also being told that they were doing some sort of training exercise so they were doing a training exercise and then all of a sudden artillery and shells started <laughs> started landing around them i mean really how deluded is this guy it's absolutely absurd man and you know there's one thing that just really resonates with me when I make this video is just the, the, the sheer lack of care or compassion that's in this guy right now. He, do, he just doesn't care. He's bombed a city which in Ukraine, I, think, I, watched the, uh, I watched the speech that President Zelensky gave at the UN Congress. And he said that, you know, this, this one city, which is the closest city to Russia, it's right on the border, right? This city housed Ukrainians and Russians, and they had warm relationships. Within that city, they had something like 20 universities. So there was, <laughs> there were students there. There were kids there. And Putin ordered a rocket strike on that. He, he landed a fucking cruise missile in that city. So who knows how many people have been killed there, but he's killing innocent people indiscriminately targeting Russian personnel, Ukrainian. He just doesn't care. He just wants to take back Ukraine by all means. And I mean, President Zelensky even said that they will they will fight. They will fight to the last man if they have to. And I honestly admire that. I honestly believe that the world needs more leaders like Zelensky. Men of honor. Men of steel who are willing to grit their teeth when some dog comes and barks at them. Dog comes and barks at you, you fucking bark back. I don't care how ridiculous that sounds. That is that is confrontation 101. And you know the the thing that's so crazy about this. I mean, look, I'm I was a soldier, right? I've never been to an active war zone, but I can only at least I trained for it. You know, I was a soldier. I've never been to an active war zone. I've never deployed to a theater of combat, but at least I trained for it. There are people on the ground in Ukraine, Ukrainian citizens who aren't even combat soldiers. They're women and young men who've not trained for combat, who are out there right now fighting for their lives. If that doesn't tell you just how against oppression these people are, 
I don't know what will. And you know, I, I make videos about, you know, winning the war within yourself, you know, one battle at a time. I wanted to concentrate on an actual war that's going on and just look at the two sides. Look at those two sides and then compare and contrast them with ourselves. Because honestly, this whole, like, this whole battle with Ukraine is like the stage and if we look at ourselves and look at the conflicts that we have within ourselves, you can see the split down the middle. On one side, we have that egoistic, highly, you know, riled up, easily offended and triggered and just very arrogant sides to ourselves, which is a human thing. But you can see how ugly it can come across as sheer arrogance, entitlement, thinking that we know better, thinking that our way is the best way or you, you submit or die. And then we have that resilient side to ourselves, which, you know, in the face of adversity, will take the fight head on. Do the right thing on a really hard day. Just do the right thing. Like push through the pain, push through the obstacles. And yes, you will take knocks. You will fall down, lose a lot. The Ukrainian people are losing, you know, resources, ground, and their own blood has been spilt on their own lands, but they're also spilling a hell of a lot of the Russians. And this isn't some sort of you know euphemism to become some sort of homicidal maniac. What I'm saying is when you are struggling with yourself and whatever you're fighting against is knocking you down, you get back up and you push yourself towards it. That I truly believe is the way in which people need to conduct themselves because life is only going to stomp you and in the pre and you know in the presence of dictators and bullies there are going to be people out there who are going to just try and walk all over you you need to, it's up to you to develop that sense of metal and bring yourself together fight back just like the ukrainians are doing and honestly my hat goes off to them i have the utmost respect for them and you can see clearly that with putin's his whole attitude his demeanor when he realizes that you know, he's losing this battle because his people don't even support this war. They're protesting outside the Kremlin and he's having them locked up. Really? Is that the type of leader that shows strength with it, you know, strength for his people by locking them up against his own decisions, locking them up because of decisions that he's made? How does that make sense? And then he's got his own troops who are confused. Half of them think that it's a peacekeeping exercise. The others were told that they're going to hunt down neo-Nazis. You know, I'm stressing this point again because it just shows how, how there's such a massive break in communication. But then when you look at the infrastructure of Russia right now, you know, it's only 5% who are the affluent sort of echelon of society. Everybody else is poor. So there's already disarray within the land. And it's only just painting Russia in negative light. Because now, now, for the first time in history, the whole world is coming together and calling Putin exactly what he is. A bully. He's just an arrogant bully with, a, with an archaic mind. And his whole destructive sense of self-righteousness, his whole destructive campaign is not only going to cost him the biggest price, but his people are paying this as well. His own troops are paying this as well. Half of them don't even want to be there. That's why they're deserting. They're leaving their equipment. They're dumping fuel out. I mean, does that does that show a committed and motivated fighting force? Does that show you a force that wants to be there? Think about that. It's absolutely ridiculous. I just wanted to share my thoughts on this because quite a few people have asked about my thoughts on the Ukraine-Russia conflict. And I wanted to give just my wholehearted, honest opinion. You know, I mean, I'm not a politician. I'm not a war tactician. I was just a combat medic, but from my point of view, from where I stand, this is not even to do with, you know, military might. I just don't like bullies. I've been bullied before and I know what it's like to be oppressed in that sense. It's not to make it about me, but you know, my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine. My heart really does go out. And you know what? Even to the Russian troops, the guys who are there have no clue what they're doing. My heart goes out to them. Because that shit must be scary, man. You know, that's not, <laughs> that's not something to be taken lightly. You're literally going into a situation where you could live or die. Rather, you could die at a moment's notice. And the constant destruction that's being done to the economy, you know, resources are being depleted. Russia as a whole is being strangled by the rest of the world with all the sanctions. 
And Putin doesn't seem to give a shit. Let's not go into the the talks of nuclear warfare because that would be the ultimate, like literally like end game. That is literally like the end game right there. That is the that is the 25 kill streak tactical nuke going off where the whole world just ends. Because that guy hits the red button, you best believe that America, France, and the UK and the rest of NATO are going to launch all their missiles. And yeah, sure, the world will most likely ex- just get vaporized. All life on Earth will just cease to exist. But before that happens, best believe Russia will be reduced to nothing. And the nuclear fallout over time will just kill everyone else. Because let's not forget, Chernobyl is in Ukraine. And if this mad bastard decides to blow up Ukraine... <laughs> and blow up Chernobyl, well, then he's just going to reopen that massive issue that we had 20 years ago. That radiation is just going to like seep through the land and just go everywhere. So it's not only going to affect everyone immediately right now in this time, but for the generations to come. So I just wanted to make this video and just, you know, hopefully provoke some thought to anybody who's thinking about Ukraine, thinking about Russia, and just kind of get a perspective on someone who just doesn't like bullies yeah that's it guys just remember you can win the war with yourself one battle at a time just remember you can win the war with yourself one battle at a time sk out